Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Mathlog here, and this lesson is using ratios and rates to solve problems. So don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathlog.com. Make sure you pick the 6th grade, the California site right there. So this stands for California Common Core. So that's for our teachers right here. And so our question here is, is how can we use ratios and rates uh, to make comparisons and predictions right here? Okay, so I'm at school and they're remodeling, so you might hear some uh, construction workers in the background right now. So anyway, so here we're going to use tables to compare ratios. So Anita's raspberry lemonade has two cups of lemonade and three cups of raspberry juice. So, so there's um, uh, the rate, so two to three. And then Bonnie's raspberry lemonade is uh, three cups of lemonade to five cups of raspberry juice. So her rate is three to five right there. Okay, so here's a table. This is for Anita. Okay, so Anita's recipe, the ratio of lemonade to raspberry juice, is two to three and I think I highlighted that right there yeah two to three right there okay and then uh, now we're going to use equivalent ratios to complete the tables right here okay so so here's the ratio two to three right there so let's go down here this is going to be this ratio three times two then this is three times three three times four three times five so whatever number we multiply in the denominator we gotta multiply by the same number in the numerator so two times two this will be two times this number here three two times this number here four so you just gotta multiply the same numbers going across right there okay alright then let's fill in this table right here so so two times three is six two times four is eight two times five is ten and finally over here this is gonna be three times two is six right there okay alright let's do the same for Bonnie okay Bonnie's recipe the ratio of lemonade to raspberry juice was three to five right there okay so we got to multiply the same amount right here. So three times two, this is five times two. Here's three to five right there. Three times three, five times three. Three times four, this will be five times four. So this will be three times five and five times five right there. Okay, let's fill these in. Three times five will be 15. Here, this is five times four, so that's 20. This will be 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 2 is 10 right there. Okay, so let me shrink those up right there so we can answer some questions right here. So find uh, uh, two columns, you guys, uh, one in each table in which the amount of raspberry juice is the same. And we'll circle these. And I boxed them, you guys. I couldn't put a circle on this small little thing right here. So raspberry juice. So raspberry juice here is 3 cups, 6 cups, 9 cups, 12 cups. 15 cups right here okay right here is 5 cups 10 cups 15 cups okay so here the raspberry juices have the same amount 15 cups right there so that's what that's asking right there so which recipe has more lemonade and how do we know okay well here when the raspberry juice is 15 cups we have 9 cups of lemonade here when the raspberry juice is 15 cups we have 10 uh, uh, cups of lemonade so which recipe has more Anita Anita has more lemonade than than uh, Bonnie because uh, uh, she has more lemonade for the same amount of raspberry juice right there. Okay, so now we're going to compare, you guys. Okay, so is uh, 10 fifteenths uh, greater than, less than, or equal to 9 fifteenths? Well, since the denominator is the same, we look at the numerators. 10 fifteenths is greater than 9 fifteenths right here. Now remember, these are equivalent ratios going across this table right here. So 10 fifteenths equals two-thirds and nine fifteenths equals three fifths because these are equivalent ratios right here okay so uh, is is two-thirds less than or greater than or equal to three fifths right here okay two-thirds was our ten fifteenths so since ten fifteenths is bigger than nine fifteenths that means two-thirds is bigger than three fifths right there okay all right, so here we're going to uh, use equivalent ratios to solve some problems here. So do you remember in the last lesson, if you watched it, it was uh, GORP. GORP is a trail mix that hikers use. So here's one recipe for a GORP mix. It calls for four cups of chopped nuts and six cups of dried fruit. Tammy increased the recipe, and she instead used six cups of chopped nuts and nine cups of dried fruit. Did Tammy use the correct ratio of nuts to fruits? Okay, so... We're going to find the ratio of nuts to fruits in the recipe, okay? So in the recipe, four cups to six cups is what the recipe calls for. So the ratio is four to six. All right, now let's find Tammy's ratio. So Tammy did six cups to nine cups, so it is uh, six to nine right there, okay? All right, so find equivalent ratios that have the same first term, okay? So the first terms are the four and the six, okay? The four cups of nuts, and then uh, uh, Tammy's is the... Um, 
is the six cups of nuts right there. So the first terms are the four and the six. Now the book chose to do the second term, six and nine, which is fine, but since four and six are smaller numbers, I like choosing those ones. And so 12 is a multiple of both those numbers right there. So find equivalent ratios that have 12 in the first number or the top number right here. So we're gonna change four to 12 by multiplying it by three over three, and we're gonna change six to 12 by multiplying this fraction by two over two okay so there they are right there so four times three is twelve six times three is eighteen here we get twelve over eighteen right there and since uh, twelve over eighteen is equal in both ratios then the ratio of four to six and six to nine are equivalent so Tammy did use the same ratio uh, as the nuts to the fruits that was given in the recipe right there okay all right let's try another one here you guys so in a math club there are two sixth graders for every three seventh graders Okay, at this year's math fair, I used to teach uh, math counts at, uh, uh, I used to teach at a middle school here in our district, Churchill Middle School, and we did pretty well there for a while. So anyways, at this year's math fair, there were seven projects by sixth graders, and then there was 12 products by seventh graders for every 12 products by, uh, projects by seventh graders. So is the ratio of the sixth graders to seventh graders in the club equivalent to the ratio uh, of their projects right there and explain? Okay, so let's first find the ratio of the in the club, sixth graders to seventh graders, two to three right there, okay? And then the projects, you guys, uh, from sixth graders to seventh graders is seven to 12 right there. And so we wanna see if these are equal, they're not, but we'll see why. So we we can make these both uh, 14s if we wanted to, or we can make these both 12s if we wanted to. And since that's already 12, let's change this fraction to 12 right there. So 12 is a multiple of 3, so let's find an equivalent ratio with 12 in the second term of this fraction right there. So we'll multiply this guy by 4 over 4, and that's going to give us 12 right there, okay? So 3 times 4 is 12, so that means multiply that 2 times 4 is 8, okay? Can you see that 8 twelfths is not equal? equal to 7 twelfths right there. So now we can just compare and we can see 8 twelfths is greater than 7 twelfths, so the ratios are not equal, okay? All right, so we're gonna use rates to make some predictions right here, okay? So here's good old Fred. Fred drove 112 miles in two hours, so suppose, suppose dread, Fred drives for another 10 hours, or drives for 10 hours. If he goes the same driving speed, um, can he drive more than 600 miles and explain? So we're going to use rates to help us uh, with this problem right here. This is called a double number line, and it compares the number of miles driven for the different amounts of time. And it helps us because uh, uh, the regular intervals represent equivalent rates uh, that compare different quantities. So here, these are multiples of two. So that's why it's called a double number line. So here's, here's uh, two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four, two times five right there. So here, so since we multiply this times one, this times two, this times three times four times five, you can multiply this times 2 and you get a, uh, 224. And if we multiply 112 times 3, we get 336. 112 times 448, we get, I'm sorry, times uh, 4, we get 448. Anyways, let's slide that up right there. So answer some questions. We're going to use the double number line to identify Fred's rate for two hours. Okay, here's Fred's rate for two hours. 112 miles for two hours right there, okay? All right, so... There's a good old Fred's speed right there. So uh, we're going to describe the relationship with Fred's rate for two hours and the other rates shown on the double number line. Okay, so uh, both terms, top and bottom, uh, in the original rate are multiplied by the same number to find equivalent rates. So here is uh, 2 times 2, so here is 112 times 2. Here is 2 times 3, so here's 112 times 3. Here's 2 times 4, so here's 112 times 4. Here's 2 times 5, so 112 times 5. All right, now what I like to think is this is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Up here, this is plus 112, plus 112, plus 112 plus 112, which either way you want to do that. So let's complete the number line, you guys, okay? All right, so we can do 112 times 5 because 2 times 5 equals 10, or we can just take this and add 112, okay? So I like adding 112 when we get 560. So now we can answer the question, after 10 hours, does Fred drive more than 600 miles? Nope, he drove only 560 miles right there, okay? So no, he didn't. 
All right, so uh, here's another question. So in 15 minutes, Mark uh, can walk two blocks. So at this rate, how many blocks uh, can he walk in 75 minutes? And we're going to use a double number line again to find the answer. That's what the book is asking us to do. All right, so since it's that we're doing a double number line, because this is a multiple of two, so we can just keep doing multiples of two right there. All right, so here's multiples of two. So here's two times one. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and this would be 8, this would be 10 right here, okay? So there's that right there. All right, and then, or we can do this, you guys. Um, uh, uh, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2, we can just keep adding to, adding to. Up here, we're adding 15. 15 plus 15 is 30 right there. 30 plus 15 is 45. 45 plus 15 and then finally 60 plus 15 is 75 right there so now we can answer the question you guys 75 minutes is right here 75 minutes he went 10 blocks right there okay piece of cake right there okay now what you can do is you can multiply I think your book is suggesting multiply 2 times 5 is 10 so 15 times 5 would get us 75 right there but you can just keep adding like we did right there also just make sure you're doing consistently okay and the other one said how can we use a unit rate to answer part D? Well, that was talking about Fred and driving, okay? So so let's slide that up. So remember, Fred drove 112 miles in two hours. So his rate was 112 miles every two hours. To find his unit rate, we want this to be a one. So we'll divide the bottom by two, so we divide the top by two. So to get unit rate, divide by two, and we get 56 miles per one hour. I should have wrote one hour right there. So he goes 56 miles an hour. So since he drove 10 hours, and we multiply 56 times 10, which is 560 miles, which is less than 600 miles, which is what it was asking. So Fred did not drive more than 600 miles. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.